Okay, here we go guys. Principle number five out of the seven key principles and this one is radical self-honesty. Uh, this is summarizing some practical applications around radical self-honesty and I'd like to start this particular section off by sharing a couple of things that are really relevant in this section. In the back of the FIP version in Course in Miracles, in the manual for teachers on page 9, uh, section 4, what are the characteristics of God's teachers? There's 10 characteristics. And the very first one is trust, which is really the birthing of honesty. Birth, and I've got it written here, that <clears throat> honesty is a direct directly related to my trust level so I just want you to just hang on to that and park it and just keep referring back to that because to the degree we have some resistance around honesty is also reflective of where our trust levels sit because if your trust levels are very high you don't have any issues being honest and that was a big revelation for me <clears throat> I want to read something to you. So in trust, there's six stages to the development of trust to awakening from the dream. And Jesus lays, lays it out in, 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 the, in the very first section here. Development of trust, stage one, two, three, four, five, six. S preceding that, immediately after stage six, the very second point he talks about is honesty. And I want to read something to you. And this will all tie in at the end. In all traits of God, teachers rest on trust. Once that has been achieved, and uh, the others cannot fail to follow. Only the trusting can afford honesty. For only they can see its value. Honesty does not apply only to what you say. Honesty does not apply only to what you say. So it's a feeling thing as well. It's all, you know, and, I, and I've got it written here. Uh, anyway, I'll come back to it, uh, to what you say. The term actually means consistency. There's nothing you say that contradicts what you do. No thought opposes any other thought. No act belies your word. No, other, no word lacks agreement with another word. Such are the truly honest at no level are they in conflict with themselves? Therefore, it's impossible for them to be in conflict with anything or anyone. It's amazing how much emphasis puts on honesty rela relating to the trust thing. And I see now the perfection and how one is stitched straight in after the other. So I'm encouraging you guys to have a look at this section and tie it all in with this radical self-honesty. So I'll give you those references again. It's in the Manual for Te Teachers, the FIP version. It's uh, section four, what are the characteristics of God's? The, the very first point he talks after the introduction is trust. And in trust, there's the six stages in the development of trust from awakening from the dream. Straight after that proceeding, the fir very first point he talks about of the 10 characteristics of the teachers of God, the very first one is honesty. So relate all that together to the end of this. So I'll leave that with you. All right, let's get going. <clears throat> so I've got the references here. Course of Miracles, Manual for Teachers, page nine, section four, blah, blah, blah. So it's all here. You can start and stop the video whenever you're ready. Honesty. I, I, I put here as the beginning of our unpacking journey on this, this whiteboard, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Why would you start with that in terms of honesty? I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love putting that up because it's a check-in on humility and where we're at, like it's a gauge. Are we okay to go to that place? Why would you start there with honesty? Well, let's just keep moving. I know there's gonna be some people who say, I'm not saying bloody sorry to anybody and I'm not like, <laughs> forgive me. What well, for? I'm always honest or most of the time I'm honest, but just follow me on this. 
So this is me applying the seven key principles in my life and I'm now talking to a brother, sister or colleague out in the world. I say to them, I'm adopting these seven key principles into my life and they're really cool because it's helping me become a lot more authentic in my communication with you and, and everybody else in my life. So I say to them, will you help me get beyond my old patterns and my old habits? Would you help me? So it's a non-threatening scenario. It's a non -th You're creating a non-threatening environment by saying to them, would you help me? What are they going to say? No. <laughs> They'll say, well, I don't know what to do. And why are you doing this? I've never really been 100% honest with you. And I know that. Why? Because I've never been 100% honest with myself. So this is part of that whole evolution of rolling out the seven key principles in the fabric that binds your communication with your buddies, your mates, your colleagues, your friends, relatives, your partners. It's, you're coming from this place of vulnerability and transparency and honesty and, and defenselessness and they can feel and see that. So of course they're going to support you. So <clears throat> I'm sorry, forgive me, I've never showed up. Can you help me break these old habits and patterns? And from now on, I want to be 100% honest with you all the time. Why didn't you do it in the past? Somebody will say that and invariably it will come up. And, and just say, my fear has always been that you'd reject me. If I, if I turned up and I was that honest, my fear is that everybody would reject me. I wouldn't have any friends left in the world. But in fact, the exact opposite happens because they feel your intention is coming from this place of honesty, vulnerability and transparency and defenselessness. Of course they're going to support you. They're going to feel the essence and the intent behind you doing this is coming from such a loving place that you're going to show up and love yourself, show up and love them more. Of course they're going to support you. They're going to reject you. It's, it's impossible. Can't happen. My previous thoughts came from fear. That's why I thought that. And if I was to be 100% honest, you'd leave our relationship or you'd leave the friendship. Well, I've done it with many and not once rejected this approach because it's coming from that intent. So just watch your intent. If your intent's coming from fear, they're going to push back at you and say this, this and this, and you're going to come back and say, well, all these principles don't work. If your intention is right, set your intention. If you come at it from fear and the ego and you're a bit like insecure and you're a little bit wobbly and all over the place, they're going to pick that up and they're going to push back on you and say to them, that's an old pattern, that's an old habit, and I do feel insecure and just hold me and help me while, you, while I work through this process. And you're given all these videos individually so you can go through the whole entire process one at a time and practice it. Just do one at a time. Don't try and smash it all out in one conversation on the very first week you've had all these. I wouldn't suggest that. <laughs> Not very... Not very loving, not very kind to yourself. Um, and, and, and when you finish this, just watch how it flows. It's the past, it was fear, it was my projection. Um, and, and, and all of that, why would you leave the relationship and the friendship? Because that was my projection based on the past. It's not, it's not where you're at now. Setting your intention, moving forward with these new seven key principles the purity and the, the defenselessness and the sincerity behind it is just pure love. So any fear-based thought system that you're, that you're um, having some conflict with, it's just a projection on the past. Don't worry about it. Don't take it personally. Just keep going. Just keep going. So <clears throat> why are you doing all this? Because where you're at right now, is I love and respect you, the friend who you're chatting with, I love and respect you too much not to be 100% honest anymore. It's done. From this point on, I want to show up all the time, be in alignment, come from that place, set my intention, join with you. If I'm not quite 100%, 
I'm going to share that with you and ask you to help me while I process and navigate my way through this. It's all new. It's okay. Don't take it personally. Just stick with it. Just stick with it. The reward will far outweigh this whole fear thing of losing identity or, you know, <laughs> screwing it up. You won't screw it up. It's okay. Even if you do, don't take it personally. Just keep going. Because in the big scheme of things, you're going through, you know, you're morphing through a big process going from fear to um, to just pure love and, and and creating this unconditional space for you and for them. I've never been 100% honest with myself. Well, further on you'll see when we get up in this corner and we start talking about that, you'll see that the, the, the fear comes from just deceit. And, and the whole tapestry that runs in the background is quite, um, it's quite toxic. But it has one single outcome, and that's to maintain separation. So just hang on to that. Let's, let's keep going. Um, I love myself way too much, 100% now. I want, to, I want to invoke the miracle in all the communications. I want to see the, the miracle that's behind all the, the, the miscommunication from the past to show up to this new place. I want to accept the atonement and I want to receive it. I want to invoke the miracle. So your whole intention lies really in this space here. By always being 100% honest, all that will naturally happen. It just will. We've gone through this, you know, for six, seven years, and it's just miraculous what comes out of these, this transformation. Um, just a helping hand here to navigate some of this is I'm I'm asking you to go to a place in your in in your mind where you're a hundred percent honest with your presence. So get, get in line before you engage in these conversations. A am, I, am I lucid? Am I present? Am I, is my mindful presence in the right space? In other words, am I coming, if there's two worlds, one's real, which world am I coming from to have these levels of engagement, these conversations? Because if you're coming from a fear-based thought system, you're coming from the illusory world and it ain't going to do you any credits at all because all of this is going to come out all discombobulated. So come back and just be really lucid and pregnant and mindful. And, and the more you practice, the more you practice this honesty, the more your trust rise, your trust levels will rise. So it's an it's a exercising the muscle type concept that, yeah, it's going to be a little bit challenging at first for you to come out in this new morph paradigm of, oh, I wasn't only honest and now I want to be honest. And is it going to be smooth and seamless and possibly not, but that's okay. Just be honest about it and go, you know, it's all new to me and <laughs> I could screw this up, but I'm going to have a crack at it anyway. So just be a little bit gentle with yourself as you go into this. And, and again, I urge you to be on the front foot in honesty to say, look, this is all new. Uh, I want to keep exercising, you know, my uh, my trust levels in this space. So it could take me a little bit to get my my stuff all together. So just just hang in there. Bear with me. Um, so th so they're th they're the running day to day operational things that you know tie into the back end of what Jesus says in the manual. The development of of trust, the six stages, and especially this one here, page 11, part two, honesty out of the 10. This is a really big one, and I'd like to jump into that and talk a little bit about it here. When we communicate, we need to be vertically aligned. And, and what does that mean? Vertically aligned means that everything I say, feel, think, and do are in alignment. And, and I read it out before, he says that it can't, you can't say one thing and mean another. What, what does he mean by that? Is he, what he's saying is that the audience, whoever they are, you know, friends, buddies, so forth, 
they'll pick it up. They they will pick it up. And and it's a feeling thing. And we're not we don't have to go to college to learn this. We already know it. We know when people are trying to pull the wool over our eyes and and say one thing and mean another. We can feel it a mile away. So being vertically aligned is not something that you have to convince somebody of or preach or teach. It's a felt state. So being radically honest, I encourage you to, to do this whole honesty, you know, being present and mindful because if you're not and you get up here to this one and you start executing some of these principles into to your communication thread, people are going to feel it if you're, if you're out of whack. So just be mindfully present that, that you can't share something like this and for them not to feel it. So they either feel that there's some, something out of whack or they feel you in alignment. Both of those will be going on. Everybody's radar picks that stuff up all the time. Honesty does not apply only to what you say. Do you get that? Honesty does not apply only to that what you say. It's a feeling thing. So you have to you have to be mindfully, lucidly present <laughs> and take accountability for as you go through this process, people go, oh, okay, yeah, I hear you, but I don't feel you. So they hear it, but they don't feel the message. And that, that's him, he's saying that. They, these aren't my words. There's nothing you say that contradicts what you think or what you do. Think about that. There's nothing that you say that contradicts what you think and what you do what you think and what you say and what you do. It's really all tied together. So if you're, con if you're contradicting inside, you're going to be contradicting in your message. If you're coming from ego and fear, it's all going to come out all discombobulated and wobbly and, and everybody's going to say, mate, you're full of it. It's, <laughs> I don't believe a word of it. So you can't contradict what you think and what you say and what you feel. Have a look at what he says here. All conflict is the inve inevitable result of self-deception. Self-deception is dishonesty. So internally, if you're in conflict, in other words, coming from ego, they're going to know it a mile away. All conflict is the inevitable result of self-deception. And self-deception is dishonesty. Like, that's just, he just nails it right there. Again, they're not my words. They're, they're straight out of the course. How about this one? Ego is radical self-dishonesty. Ego is radical self-dishonesty. Self-dishonesty, oh, sorry, self-dishonesty. Self-deception is the outcome of self-betrayal. Ego is radical self-dishonest, self-deception, and the outcome from that is self-betrayal. How's that? So this whole thing around, you know, come back to here about, I've never really been 100% honest with myself. How do we know that? Because in the past we were in ego land, we are in egoville, the whole thing was just ego, ego, ego. So we're all operating up here in all of this. And the outcome of that is that's projected out onto others and to the body and onto the world. That whole self-betrayal, self-deception. So if we were to flip all that, we can see <clears throat> there's going to be immense healing and saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I'm never honest with you. And, you know, will you bear with me while I work through these old patterns and these old habits? And I've never really been 100% honest with myself. See this? Self-deception, self-betrayal. There it is right there. Boom. And here, the fear in the past, the fear has always been that if I showed up and did this honesty thing, you'd reject me. Well, I would if you were coming from fear and you didn't do all these check-ins. So two worlds, one's real. Which world are we coming from? So take the, 
take the thought back to the origin of its master. Are we preaching to this world or to this world? Which, which Messiah are we worshipping? Ego or Holy Self? So it has a beautiful flow to it. If we step back and we have a look at it, I've, I've got this as the punchline right at the finish, and it's down here. Radical self-honesty is taking action without fear. So in other words, moving through this whole space of transition, morphing from the illusory world into the holy self space of knowing, is it becomes a fearless state of communication. Guys, you will be fearless moving through using these seven key principles to authentic communication and relating. You will end up in this place, this beautiful space of, of knowledge and knowing, and you'll be in, in, in a fearless, you'll be held in fearlessness. Fearlessness, get that. Not fear, no rejection. There'll be just a knowing, it'll be reverberating through every atom of your being. The end result is a fearless state of communication. You know, the radical self-honesty, it's a beauty, it's a corker, it's a crack, I love it. Why? Because it breaks down the whole entire ego thought system. Radical. <laughs> Look... <laughs> Ego is radical dishonesty. Self-deception and the outcome from that is self-betrayal. We're moving. We're going into radical self-honesty is taking action without any fear at all. And it morphs into atonement, receiving it, love from both sides, closing the gap, the gap diagram. Closing the gap from the two split minds witnessing separation. Everything in the gap diagram is closed. You have these beautiful holy instances, this love and embrace of this softness, this symbiotic dance of communication that supersedes and is beyond this world. Why the heck wouldn't we want to go there? I've got goosebumps all over, just... I know it, I have it, I have it happen to me all the time. It's so beautiful that I wish everybody could feel that all the time. So the seven key principles as we go through, this is number five. We got, uh, we got um, trust and gratitude still yet to cover off. And I'm really excited to, to complete trust and, and to, to do gratitude. They're the next two videos. But at the end of that, I'm going, to, um, I'm going to do a summary video that sort of ties all of these seven key principles in on how we can walk, walk the walk and talk the talk and integrate these seven key principles in, into a language of everyday eventuality of things that might come across our path and how we navigate that. And you'll you know, get to see the principles in action. But we've talked about a lot of it anyway along the line, so it shouldn't be foreign to you by now. You should have a bit of a feeling about how it flows and how you converse with others around this. It's not about projecting an expectation on them. It's about you asking them for permission for you to exercise it and practice it and hold you while you go through this process of going from someone who wasn't completely honest or defenseless or transparent or vulnerable or accountable to this place where you go, well, I love myself and I love you way too much not to do this all the time now. So let's let's go there. I want to join you there. Anyway, guys, radical self-honesty. It's a cracker. Practical applications. It gives some background there with a the course. Dive in, check it out, and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the trust video next. Beauty. Ciao.